What I want to talk about is from this kingdom perspective, when it comes to wealth and money and, and all these things, you got to understand just a couple simple things. This is going to set a lot of people free today. This is going to help a lot of people. Um, it's going to give them permission uh, to actually go after the life they want. Money, you have to understand this. It is not, I'm going to be super simple, but money is not a bad thing. Money is a good thing. It is not bad. And as you guys broke down on the previous videos, it is a blessing from the Lord. The Bible, this book is full of hundreds of teachings, met, uh, technically thousands of teachings and strategies and precepts and principles that teach us how to become wealthy. It's in the book. Most people don't know. Most people haven't read it. Most people have just heard somebody or saw an Instagram post quote some partial scripture and have built conclusions and belief systems off of that. So what I like to do is I like to point people back to what the scripture actually says about money, about success, about prosperity. Because when you know what it actually says, it's super freeing. It frees you up. It's like, oh, that's what that actually, that's the words? These are awesome. I didn't know that. So that's what that's what I feel like I'm, I'm called to do is just help you guys see and understand what the word says so that you can be successful in every area of your life, including financially. You said something interesting earlier when you talked about if all my worldly definition of wealth went away, I'd be able to make it all back. And that is also rooted in scripture. Many of you guys have heard it before, but Deuteronomy 8.18 says, you will remember the Lord your God who has given you the power to get wealth. He can establish the covenant which he made with your ancestors. The covenant he's referring to is that Abrahamic covenant you mentioned in Genesis 12. Yep. There's just another scripture that says, one translation says, remember it's your God who gave you the ability to make wealth. So he says, you've got the ability, you've got the power, you have it. Every single person who reads that scripture and accepts it has that power and ability. So if the stuff went away, that's fine. I still have the power and ability to make it, to get it. Now, we have to go activate that power and ability. You can have a power and not use it. You can have an ability and let it lie dormant. And it sets you free because the, the ending of that scripture says, man, I gave you that power just to establish the covenant, which a covenant, a an agreement that I made with your great, 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 great grandfather, Abraham. You can also tie it to Galatians 3.29. It says that everything I promised my servant Abraham, if you are in Christ, it now belongs to you too. So he's saying the same promises I made Abraham, they're your promises too. Now, knowing that as your foundation, if you have any money hangups when it comes to God and the kingdom, study what we just talked about. A lot of, a lot of people have a lot of guilt around money, condemnation around money, baggage, hangups, all kinds of stuff tied to their moral beliefs. And a lot of times we'll think, oh, I just need, Trav, just give me like the money-making strategy. How do I make money online right now? Do I do drop shipping? Do I do Amazon? What do I do? Uh -huh. And the truth is you actually need to get rid of your financial guilt, shame, and condemnation. And then the ideas and strategies will show up. The strategies don't matter as much as you having your belief system correct. What you believe about money, your relationship money actually matters the most. That's why a lot of times you mentioned earlier, a lot of your clients, a lot of people watching are kind of tired of living the way they've been living. Yes. They've lived this way for 30 years. The end results are burnout, disappointment, discouragement, still feeling behind, still feeling like they should be further ahead. Well, it's not that they necessarily have a strategy issue. I would propose it's more of a belief system issue. When I changed my beliefs around money, what do you know? Money started flowing easier. We we do these things where we self-sabotage, we second guess everything, we think God is mad at us, we think all this stuff that the enemy, we have an enemy, you have an opponent, you have an adversary, he wants you to lose. And when we're aware of that, I'm like, oh, okay, I see what's happening now. God wants me to win. He gave me the power to get wealth. He wants me to prosper. The enemy wants me broke, discouraged, down, and limited. I've got generous ideas. I need some money to execute these generous ideas. God's all for that. God is great with you being rich, prosperous, 
and wealthy. We do it in a way where we are not obsessed with money. It is not the main thing in our lives. We are not covetous. I got, I got a great revelation on that just recently. Covetous means you're constantly mindful about money. You're constantly thinking about it, or it could be stuff. It could be the car that you want, the house that you want. You go to bed yearning and longing for it. You wake up. It's the first thought on your mind. First thought is money or how do I make more or how do I get this car? Or, if I had this house, I'd be happy. If I had this much money, I'd be happy. If I had this in my IRA, I'd be happy. If I had this, 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 I'd be happy. That's actually being covetous. And the Bible says something interesting. It says covetousness is idolatry. When we talk about idolatry, it's anything that we put in place of God's job that God should be doing. I might be getting real deep for your audience. This is what we talk about on my channel. I'm just going to go for it. We, yeah, can, we, can, we can spin it later, but it's meant to be the source of our happiness, our peace, our security, our self-worth. If having a certain amount of money makes you feel more happy, more secure, more valuable. I'm walking around. So you talk about status. I'm walking around like I'm a baller now because I got more in the account. Mm. Look, I get it. I felt all those feelings. And it seems like more money in a, in a fat bank account and fat retirement and savings is going to make you feel a certain way. It doesn't. Those are good things to have, but they are not our main aim. They are not what we are to be chiefly pursuing. When we become obsessed with them, money minded all the time, when it has our attention, when it has our affection, when it, when it has our allegiance, we turn to him for those things. And here's what's great. When we do that, he adds everything else to us. My whole thing is you're going to get the wealth. You're going to get the money. You're going to get the increase. You're going to get the bank accounts. You're going to get the investments. You're going to get the retirement. You're going to get all the things. Those are great things. Nothing wrong with them, but they're not your main focus in life. They're not the main purpose. They're not the main pursuit. God has a call, a mission, an assignment, multiple ones for all of us to do. I mean, look at Denzel. He's walking in it right now. I've got to know him a little bit more over the last couple months. This guy's on a mission. And as he's on mission, what happens? His mission is not, let me go get rich and make all this money and forget everything else. No, his mission is, I got to do what God, this is like the thing on my heart. He's fulfilled. He's having a blast, goes to bed early and wakes up early because he's on fire. He's on mission. The money's added to him. Let me ask This is all scriptural. This is all scriptural. Okay. Okay.